Rocky yeah. Horror was pre-punk rock, but it had the punk look. Well, and the punk bands, so... Well, yeah, I mean, that soundtrack is incredible. As you know, I have the Don't Dream It, Be It tattoo. Hey, and, you got a pillow right here. And then. these words, they really haunted me my whole life. Cause yeah, no, it, it, it is. Well, sometimes when I um, sign an autograph, uh, I'll say, don't dream it. Be a, you know, <sighs> I think it's a, it's a tremendous thing. It's tremendous. And yeah. I, I always felt like a coward because I wasn't living the lifestyle that I wanted to uh, publicly. Yeah. And Richard O'Brien, who uh, wrote the script and the music, really, part of the music anyway, um, he lived that way. And the people that were involved, that I got involved with for Rocky Horror, most of them were from Australia. And they were all living that life of don't dream it, be it, no matter what. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. Uh, I was, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm a cross-dresser, and I was always so scared about it. And But I, Rocky Horror led me in that direction. Like, why do I like this movie so much? Because mm. they're doing whatever they want to. There's no rules. Right. And uh, well, it was proven by the um, the following of Rocky Horror is um, the so-called outsiders who all got together on those Friday and Saturday nights and the parties that they were never invited to. Right. Uh, they had. Wow. Yeah. I was uh, I, I was 13 when I first went. What year? Uh, 1981. Oh, you're late. Yeah, it came out in 75. Well, yeah, poser. I'm not a poser. I'm just, I'm my age. But we would uh, see it, we'd take the bus down Sunset and see it at that theater, uh, which is right near the Roxy, a little bit past Tiffany. That. Yeah. Right. Uh, once at, at one point during that period, the, uh, the play was at the Roxy. The film was at the Tiffany, and it was at um, 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and 4 o'clock in the morning. Yes, really. And lines for every show. Wow, that is punk. Yeah. I mean, it's a great show. And who knew? You had no idea. When Not me. I mean, none of us knew. We were making what was written, both from the script and the music, had no idea who we would appeal to, or if it was appealing to anyone, it would be a smaller group. When I showed it at uh, Fox, 20th Century Fox for the first time, they were the distributor, in the marketing meeting, half or portions of it got up and left. The other portion, <laughs> at the end of it, were just stunned. They didn't know what to do, what to say. And that goes back to not only them. I then screened it for the first time in Santa Barbara. Oh, perfect, perfect city. And, but, in those days, maybe still, when you screened a film, um, you tried to find another film that was like it so that you got the same audience. There was no film. So I, we played with On the Golden Pond or something. <laughs> you know? A golden and, pond. And sure. By the end of the film, we lost two-thirds of the audience that they went out in droves, you know. That older Santa Barbara uh Well, yeah, it's old audience. rich money. What and did you it, do that night? Did you just party? Were you depressed? No, no, we were sitting on the curb after that. Uh, I was sitting with uh, uh, a guy from 20th Century Fox, and a bunch of students came up to us and said, we love that film. A lot of other words that told us, there's an audience, we got to find it. Uh, that's just, it's so smart. That's exactly right. So we couldn't get any bookings. And, and it had one, it showed once, right? Where? In L.A.? Uh, we showed in uh, Westwood. But it stopped after that. Yeah, one show. Right. And someone from 20th Century Fox, a young guy that was there, he, uh, he got a midnight showing in New York and at the H.G. Theater. And 
we got a midnight showing in Texas, in, in Austin. Austin, not so bad. Austin, Austin, yeah, right. right. That, that'd be the city, not right. Amarillo. And so on Monday of each week after it played, he would call New York, and I would call Austin. I'd get the manager on the phone, and I'd say, how'd we do? And he'd say, 48, 50 people, you know, next Monday. How do we do? 48, 50 people. I said, who are these people? Same people, he says. <laughs> Same ones that came the first time are still coming. And, and people go three, 400, 500 times. Thousands. Thousands. Yeah. I mean, I've, been, I've been once, and I had a great time. You've I, been once? Well, no, I've been, uh, and I didn't even get to see it. <laughs> I, I did end up with a boot in my mouth, though. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. He uh, had a whole thing at his house. He had uh, Burt Reynolds clown cars. You know what clown cars are? Those yeah. they, were, they were electric cars from yeah. the 60s. They were, they were weird, weird things. And um, he had made his house where you can drive them in, kind of like this. We had a little drive-in theater. Yeah. And you could bring him in. Not good. And he was going to have a Rocky Horror Picture Show, and oh. all all day they everybody's sitting there getting ready. And I'm all dressed up. Yeah, people are getting toast and all this stuff, and I'm like, oh, okay. wow, this is going to be a wild movie, huh? And then what this you is do? recently. This was during COVID. And what'd you do? And um, I uh, had my girlfriend with me at the time, and she uh, lured me into the back she, bedroom. She, well, no, first she of seduced all, you. Well, it's not sedu seduction if it's your girlfriend already. <laughs> But anyway, she went into their uh, weird latex thing. It's not really my scene, but she came out in some crazy outfit, lured me in the back, and the next thing I know, the the movie's over, and there's bread everywhere, <laughs> and I had a great time. <laughs> Still haven't seen it, though. Yeah. Well, I, I was going to watch it, but then I thought that I'm going to wait till after I met you. And, and you got to go, go to the theater. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I didn't want to watch it on my you know, five-inch screen. Yeah. I bet people just went crazy, all the fans during COVID. They didn't know what to do. Yeah, some of the theaters that were showing it still had audience. Um, the f reaction to the film, I think I was at uh, maybe the last time I was there, seven years ago, ten years ago, I don't know. Um, it's taken on a more uh, erotic, the stage show, and the callbacks, they're much grittier than they were the early times around. Well, it's filthy. The, early, yeah, the filthy. early times, they were really funny, the the first callbacks. Now, not as funny to me, but funny to the new audience. What right. is the, what is the, um, since I have no frame of reference here, just for people that aren't listening, what are the callbacks that cool. got grittier, for instance? Uh, the audience will shout back at one of the lines. Like answer it for them, or just say the line too. Like the you movie. beat all the other girls with whips and chains. Oh, okay, I got you. And it it goes on for the whole show. Yeah, it goes on. It, it when you see it and you're in the audience, you think that we made it that way, but not. They get those callbacks in, right? And it seems like it was made for that. Yeah, but, but you did, uh, did uh, when you made it. shock treatment. Yeah. That you, you did you leave room for callbacks? No, we made. Shock treatment was a uh, disappointment in that uh, they cut the budget uh, as we were about to shoot. So it became in the studio as opposed to um, outside in a theater, etc. Um, it was supposed to take place uh, in Texas. And uh, it became this um, satire on uh, the studio. And it wasn't as funny. It wasn't as good. And Tim Curry wasn't in it. Uh, Tim Curry. You still talk to Tim Curry? Yeah. Um, every so often, I talk to him. I've seen him a few times. Uh, if we have an event, uh, he had a serious stroke. And he's working his way back from it. He does voiceovers now. You know, he's a tremendous actor. Wonderful, I mean, wonderful. Yeah, I mean, his, the, uh, the films that he has done uh, show his ability as an actor. And he didn't get typecast. Everyone knew he was Frank no, and Ford, no, but he, he still not at all. did he a lot a, of other work. He was an English actor, yeah. But I thought he should have won the Academy Award that year. I mean, that... Pro pro but the movie wasn't that big then. No, it wasn't. It yeah. took... It's, you're the only movie, the longest-running movie ever... 40 something years uh, you think it, the it, academy would like go back and retro 
no. retroactively give somebody like their their roses for doing something so incredible. Well, they do that, but I don't think they would do it with Tim. No, no, I, I just don't think he they was would. Uh, the it. He was in the it, right? Stephen King's the it. That's right. Yeah, that is correct. See, you know stuff. That was about when I came online, as far as like remembering stuff. I was born in eighty one. Eighty one. Yeah, that's when I started going to see Rocky Horror. My mother took me to the play when it played across from the Palladium. I was, I think I was 14 at the time. And uh, it was weird because I was so used to seeing the movie. Yeah. So what I actually did, I had a tape or cassette recorder. I didn't, ha I didn't own records at the time. I was nine. And I put the tape recorder next to my TV and just recorded it from the mono speaker uh, on my TV. Right. And he's a pirate. And yeah. I, yeah, pirate. sorry, I must owe you some royalties. Yeah. But while well, uh, we're here, break it out. But that was the first thing I listened to all the time. Yeah. Jesus Christ, I already paid for parking here. <laughs> so, uh, thank you for that. With and, the, uh, oh, sorry, Mike. Uh, with, the, with the money thing, we were just to go back on it. Um, you said that the, the studios wouldn't give you any, you know, they weren't going to fund these projects with these wild ideas. So, you had to come up with the money first. And well, what they did in the beginning is usually they would set a price of uh, how much they would pay for the film. You would then make it. advance that amount of money. Wow. And uh, in the case of, we did um, Rocky Horror for a little under a million dollars, actually. But it, when you brought that film to uh, whoever was going to pick up the distribution, they could turn it down also. Yeah. Oh, but there was, oh, from the studio. Okay. Yeah. So you would be out your whatever you put up until you found somebody to buy it. And I'm guessing film. back then, um, without getting into detail, I'm guessing back then there was probably some uh, little gray areas in getting money to get that much money up back then. If it was your first project, how would you even do that? Um, you mean getting it back? No, no, just get, getting the money to put up the million. Well, you you made well, a lot I, of money I, doing yeah, music. Yeah, I was I made money in the record business. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, right, you did a uh, Janis Joplin and Mamas and the Papas and tons of stuff. I didn't get paid for Janis Joplin. That was a charity. That was part of the Monterey Pop Festival. Oh, did you used to hang out with her? That's a foundation. What? You used to hang out with Janis? Slightly, not really. Okay, because she has uh, a record called "The Eighteen Essentials of Janis Joplin." Mm. I think it should have been a seven inch because I mean, there's only really two songs or yeah. three songs. Paula Jane. 18 Essentials from Janis Joplin. She yeah. wasn't around that long. No. <laughs> How long was she around? Like a summer? She two died years? when she was 26. She, no, 27. 27. She, 20, she was one of the 27, 27 club. Yeah. Yeah. She but, was a church singer. Yeah. And, and she didn't write her songs, but I'm just saying 18 songs, that's a lot. I'll listen to. Well, like, shit, I can't listen to The Doors' 18 songs either. Or Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> but yeah. Kurt Cobain, yes. Yeah, you can. You he can has 18 out. essentials. For sure. Okay, so in the 70s, I, did you hang out with Sid and Marty Croft? I knew them. Yeah. Uh, How could you get away with that? They made a kid show about taking mushrooms and smoking weed. There was more than that. There was a couple of puppet shows around L.A. other than theirs. That did the same thing and sort of put it in underneath. But I mean, the they, guy smokes uh, his magic pipe. They were interesting guys because <laughs> if you met with them, I don't, you didn't get that feeling that these were two guys that did that type of thing. Yeah, they just it, really straight. And and, yeah. and a, a, a cigarette, I mean, a, a joint was called a lid, right? Or no, a lid was no, a no, certain no. amount. No, a lid was a, an, an amount of drugs. Right, and there, you know, there's. I'll, where, tell you, I'll tell you what a lid was. The show was called Lidsville. It was a Prince Albert can that tobacco came in, and it was about, and it had a lid on it, and that cost ten dollars, and that was what a lid was. If you'd like to see the entire video of each episode and listen commercial free, go to fatmikedude.com and subscribe. Thank you.